So at the conclusion of the first part of the self analysis program we have dealt with what is mental health what is happiness if we need mental health and if we need happiness what we need to do what actually went wrong and why are we not mentally healthy and why are we not happy and the importance of understanding our unique brain design and it is only in understanding our unique brain design can we redesign our brain in order to get back our happiness and to be mentally healthy for this the assessment tool is dermatoglyphics which is a biometric assessment and through which we can understand who we are our innate disposition and our strengths and capabilities so to understand dermatoglyphics we need to understand about our genes and about our environment for this we have also spoken about the patterns because that indicates our psychology the ridges which speak about the speed of our brain and each of the fingers which is connected to a specific part of the brain so understanding all this basic concepts tells us that this analysis knowing your brain design is very very crucial for you to go forward in life okay so so once we have understood about the importance of uh, this study let us now see how we can individualize it to our own requirements in order to understand our own brain design the first step is to capture our fingerprint patterns and be able to analyze each and every finger before we actually go into the interpretation part so the first requirement we have now is to capture the 10 fingers before we actually go into the techniques of fingerprint capture to understand fingerprint patterns we have to understand basically what are the components of each finger and the fingerprint pattern so when you look at a pattern on each finger you see two points or one point of divergence and then is one point of convergence so if you understand every finger has points of convergence and divergence when we freeze an image we need to understand what we need to capture of the image so first please get thorough with the different kinds of fingerprint patterns the basic nine kind first so that you understand what patterns you have and how you need to capture it for example if it's an arch since it's just lines across the finger it's okay whichever angle you take it in but if it's a loop or a radial loop you know that there is only one delta at one side and the other there's just a flow so it's very important sometimes people have huge um, points of divergence you will have to go to the ends of the fingers in order to see where the actual point of divergence has happened so it is a difficult uh, task uh, but most of the fingers are you know visible in in closer to the center there are only few people who are very fast in their brain and so their ridge count extends to a larger area and hence to count those ridges is very difficult so before we count it we actually need to capture the image in an accurate manner and that is the reason why we have this exercise so you have to understand both extreme left and right also has to be captured along with the center of the pattern this is the basic first criteria so when you're looking at a finger each of your finger first don't do scanning of all the fingers but just take one finger maybe your left thumb work on it till you are accurate in the way you are capturing the image then work on your other fingers because if you just capture all the 10 fingers and then you find there's some mistake in it then you make mistakes in all 10 fingers so go step at a time finger at a time take some time don't make mistakes don't go in a hurry but because this is your life and you cannot make wrong interpretations the first and foremost step in identification and categorization of a finger we need to be looking for the pattern because what is the image that that finger is showing second we need to identify what is the delta that is the point of divergence where is the core 
you have to identify pinpoint. Third, we need to be counting the ridges from the point of divergence, that is from the delta to the core. So this is the basic exercise that needs to be done on your own and make sure that no mistakes happen. So in order to capture these fingerprints, the easiest technique would be to just have a biometric scanner which could just capture your images of the fingers, each finger at the click of a button and they will automatically be labeled. So you don't have a problem and you can just look at the scanned images to be able to make the categorization. But the second uh, easiest option for most of us would be ink pad. It can be blue, green, red, whatever. So all you have to do is first take the left thumb, lightly press it on the ink pad, press it from the left to the right in a slow manner. Make sure there's not too much of ink on your hand and make sure that you roll the finger from the left to the right. And when you really look close, you must be able to see clear, distinct lines and not patches of ink. So make sure that you have just, you know, evenly spread out ink on your hand with not too much and roll it on the paper so you can get a complete view of the fingerprint from left to right. Make sure that the image is clear and that there is no, it is not blotchy. If you can, get a tabulated sheet which has um, you know markings of L1, L2, L3 so that you can label the five fingers on the left hand and five fingers on the right hand. Make a ready-made tabular form on a piece of paper so that you have space specifically demarcated for the five fingers on the left hand and five fingers on the right hand. So once you take your, uh, you press the uh, ink pad and you put your finger in the correct position based on the finger that you are uh, taking the impression and roll it from left to right. Make sure that you practice it so that you become perfect and then you can do it on the original sheet of paper. So that is saved for life. Another technique on how we can take the same impressions would be by taking photographs or your fingers, fingerprint ridges. Uh, if you hold the cell phone camera, keep it a little in the dark and you can on the flash and make sure that it freezes on each finger in a manner that is you know very clear you can see that in your cell phone camera make sure that the finger is in the light or that the cell phone has a flash and keep it in the camera should be a little in the dark so if you try out these different techniques you will see that the camera can perfectly capture your entire fingerprint pattern but you need to do it at the right angle so that when you zoom in, you can see the fingerprint pattern clearly and you can even count the ridges very easily. It's a very simple technique, but has to be, you know, experimented on for a few times in order to get the right angle, the right lighting, the right flash. So you got to get comfortable with the camera and with your finger and the lighting. And this again, you could take each uh, fingerprint and then you can take each image and you can label it by editing it and you can label it with L1, L2, L3, L4 in the same manner. Or you can take the image, put it onto your laptop and then just um, crop the image and place it on this prefix sheet instead of in the uh, physical format. You can have a Microsoft Word document and you could edit these images and place it in the uh, concerned slots based on that respective finger so that this 10 fingers is frozen for you for life. Another technique that can be done is you can color the finger. If you find that the flash is too strong and that the image is not coming in rightly, you could also just color the entire finger. Print, finger make sure that the point of divergence both the ends and the center is all colored evenly not too dark and then focus the camera and take a picture you will find that you know you can find the whole colored portion standing out even that format can be followed and again in a similar manner you can crop this image and paste it onto the word document 
so that you know it will be all your fingerprints will be captured on one screen and you could you know then evaluate your 10 fingerprints another uh, technique would be to uh, mark your finger with the ink like in the thumb impression the ink pad you could put your finger on the you know you could color your finger and then take a cellophane tape and stick it on that finger if you remove it neatly and just paste it on the paper you will see that you can get the impression of your fingerprint pattern on that paper so you can use different techniques but the intention is that you have to capture the right finger the correct finger the pattern and the ridges because without this step the next steps will be of no use so you need to know how to capture the images correctly